In fact, in the show, the country is called Lichtenberg, not Luxembourg. But she signed an agreement with the Luxembourg Forum. The stone should just snap off at the cement and not be too badly damaged. All the graves are numbered, the plots are lettered, of course, so it's very easy to find a particular grave. And as we'll see when we go down there, the uh, inscriptions are on the far side of the stones facing out towards the United States of America. Wherever you stand, by the way, not one headstone is completely hidden by another one. Now you'll see 118 stars of David scattered out there, just two here in the front row on the left, of course, marking the graves of Jewish soldiers. There's 100 born buried here, five of which were from Easy Company, the so-called Band of Brothers. And I'm sure some of you have seen the movie or read the book Band of Brothers. And if you remember that story, two of them, and that was Pri uh, Private Penkala and Sergeant Skip Muck, they were sheltering in the same foxhole in the woods in Foy, which is just outside of Bastogne, received a direct hit from a German 88, and uh, what they could find of them was brought here to Luxembourg to be buried. I always like to tell this little story. There's one or two American companies, Stephen Ambrose, who wrote Band of Brothers, has one carbine to shoot the weeds when they come up uh, on site. So here we are at the grave of General Patton. And why is he buried in Luxembourg? It's a very complicated story. It's about as complicated as the man was himself. I'm sure some of you have seen that movie with George C. Scott. It was an excellent movie, a very good portrayal of Patton. And of course, it received many Oscars. One was a Best Actor Oscar for uh, Scott, which he famously refused to accept. He didn't believe, apparently, in the uh, competition of the whole Oscar system. However, to make the movie entertaining, of course, they did embellish it just a little bit. There's a scene where Patton is sitting in a building in Tunisia, and he's complaining to a rather pompous British officer about the lack of air cover. And uh, the officer is saying, oh, nonsense, the RAF has superiority of the skies. And, of course, immediately two German planes appear, bomb and strafe the village and the building where Patton is sitting. Now, in the movie, he jumps out into the street and with one of his ivory-handled revolvers, which he always had in a holster, tries to shoot one of the planes down. And very neatly, it puts a row of machine gun bullets straight between his legs. The bombing incident occurred, that was fact, but I can assure you that Patton did not jump out into the street to try and shoot that plane down. In fact, I saw a documentary several years ago and uh, one of the officers who was with him said that when the planes appeared, they all dived under the big table, which was probably the best thing to do. But of course, the movie also depicts the infamous slapping incident. Now, Patton could not accept that soldiers could be suffering from battle fatigue or shell shock. As far as he was concerned, it was malingering or cowardice. He was visiting a military hospital on the island of Sicily and a lot of very badly injured young men, uh, one or two about to die. In the movies they're putting a, um, a screen around one of the young men and Patton actually kneels by the bed and gets very, very emotional. And I think for once in his life he realised that maybe he'd made a mistake. Patton was certainly not a man who readily admitted his errors, but of course he and Montgomery couldn't stand each other, and that's putting it very mildly. And uh, Montgomery had been ordered to capture the town of Palermo on Sicily, but uh, Patton wanted to do it first. Against advice, Omar Bradley said don't do it, but against advice he had his men rush up to take Palermo, which they did, but they took very heavy casualties. And I have a feeling that when he saw them in the hospital, some of these casualties, he, uh, he had some regrets about what he'd done. And then he saw a young soldier sitting on his cot crying and went over to ask him what the matter was. And the boy said, well, it's my nerves. I just cannot take the noise. I cannot take the fighting anymore. I just can't go back to the front line. Now, as far as Patton was concerned, he had a coward sitting in front of him, of course, and uh, he lost his temper and eventually slapped the young man, I think using his gloves. His actions, of course, were reported by the medical staff to Eisenhower, who needed to relieve Patton of his command, that was the 7th Army in Italy, but instead ordered him to apologise privately, personally, to that young soldier, uh, also to the doctors and nurses who'd witnessed the uh, incident, and then to his assembled men. But, of course, the, the press in America started to have a field day. They loved to report what uh, Patton said. I mean, he, um, he always came out with what he thought. When the Germans were defeated, he publicly suggested that the Germans and the Allies should team up to fight the Russians. He never trusted the Russians. He probably had a pretty good point, but you couldn't come out with that in public after they just helped us to defeat Nazi Germany. He also blamed the wars on the Jews and communists. And I have to say, of course, I've done a lot of research, and it would appear that, unfortunately, Patton was quite a racist and, and had anti-Semitic tendencies. Uh, and Eisenhower was beginning to lose his patience. He then uh, made him military governor of the German state of Bavaria, and there Patton insisted on using local Nazis to, uh, as administrators. He was asked why, and he said, well, there's nobody else who's capable of doing it. He was basically against the uh, denazification program of the Allies. He saw no point in prosecuting and perhaps executing some of the senior Nazis. You could use those to uh, administer uh, Germany after the war. Just to break off for a second, um, Operation Ashcan, I don't know if any of you heard about that.